Hey everybody, Joy here. We're gonna talk about sewing today. For those of you who like sewing videos from me. It is about noon on a Thursday and it's March 11, 2021. And I wanna show you my new gadget. It's not really new. I mean, it is, it's brand new, it just got here. But I mean, it's not like a new invention. So, I wanted to show you why I got another one when I already had one, okay? So, this is called something. <laughs> this is called something, but I don't know what it is. Probably a hem marker, H-E-M, a hem marker. I'll put it in the description box below. By the way, speaking of description boxes, have you noticed that I have an Amazon store now? My friend Becky called and said, oh, I don't want an Amazon store. They're horrible. They're always out of everything. Well, you all understand I have no control over whether or not the item, say I put this in there, I have no way of making them keep it in stock or I have no control over the pricing. You all understand that. I'm just going to show it to you in my shop. I have three categories. I have um, an organization one, which is where I showed you the things I put my jewelry in and the things I organized my closet with. I have the sewing one and I have the quilting one. So, almost every single video, somebody asked me, what iron do you use? What ironing board do you use? What this do you use? What that do you use? Where can I find it? So. Now that I have an Amazon store, everything's all together. And you can just go to that one link and then you can find it all there. And that way, I don't have to constantly think of what I need to tell you. Oh, this is where you find the iron. This is where you find the board. This is where you find the steam machine. You understand? A lot of you have requested that I do an Amazon store. So you just go to amazon.com slash shop, S-H-O-P, not store, Amazon.com slash shop, think of hop to the shop. Amazon.com slash shop slash and my name, Joy Bernhardt. And it will take you to my little store. Aha! Uh -huh. Excellent. Okay, so I'm going to put that link under all of my videos. So one of these will be in it. Now, this is very, very old. This is probably as old as my daughter. <laughs> I bought it way, 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 way back when. Well, it has been in a closet for years and years and years. I never use it. I always had Philly or I had Jerry to mark the hems. And I hardly ever, 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 ever make dresses, right? Well, now I'm getting ready to make a lot of dresses. And I made these two dresses you saw the other day, the black one and the green one. So I got this out of the closet to try to use it so I could mark my own hem. Well, let me get up close and I'll show you what happened. Look at that. Do you see this kink? That kink right there? This has been hanging, this has been sitting in the closet for so many years. You know, it just dawned on my lightning fast mind. I probably could pull this off and cut it and get the kink out of it. Hey, how about that? Just push this little thing and chalk comes out this and then you just move it around and around and around. You turn around and you keep squirting a little ball and it squirts some chalk where you want your hem to be. Then it guarantees that your hem is parallel to the floor. Okay, let me show you kind of how it works. You unlock this, then you can move this up and down, up and down, see? So then you just walk around and you squirt and you squirt and you squirt and you squirt and you squirt. And you squirt. Now, the thing is, I can't just fold the hem up one inch or two inches like it tells you in the pattern. Hem allowance two inches because I'm not even. Even though I fix my low shoulder, I still have a high hip, a low hip, and there's no way just hemming up a dress is it going to be even and parallel to the floor. Not going to happen on me. Super, super nice to have. But, like I said, this one wasn't working, so I ordered a new one. 
and I didn't order another one of these because I figured it would just kink again. I can't believe I didn't think about cutting that off the other day. So here's the new one. This is a new improved version. It has wheels. This doesn't. This is light as a feather. I can hold it up with one finger. Very, very light. This is very heavy and I can hardly lift it with two hands. Okay? Heavy. <laughs> and it rolls. So this one will be much more stable. And it rolls. And I would suggest that you always do this on a hard floor, not on carpet. So I just opened this. I just had Jerry help me open the box. So you put this in this hole right there and you tighten it. Turn the little wing nut and it doesn't work. I think it's going to take my husband. There's a nut on here and you're going to have to loosen the nut. Hmm. A nut shouldn't be doing the nut because it doesn't work right. So anyway, if the nut wasn't there, <laughs> I'll have to Jerry to show me what you do with the nut. And he'll say, I've been trying to figure out that about for 45 years. Okay. So this little thing right here is what you put the chalk in. And I don't know if there's chalk already in it, so I'll be careful. No, there's no chalk in it. So that's the little container. And so I will pour the chalk in the little container. And then you put the lid on, and it just snaps on. And then you hook it. I kind of know how it works because I've got this other one, right? So you hook it, and then these you just pull apart. This is like a little, um, a little hair clip. And you just squeeze it. Oh, pfft. And of course that isn't tight yet. You squeeze it and it goes up and down. And so then there's a, uh, a ruler here on the side. Now I don't know, I guess you could figure out how far you wanted to be off the floor. Let me see how that works. Yes, yes. So 15 inches up on this equals 15 inches up on this. So you figure out how far off the floor you want your hem and go for it. Yay! How fun is that? Yes, I have to take this downstairs and have Jerry fix that bolt for me. <laughs> Isn't that fun? Isn't that fun? <laughs> so this is not from Amazon. This is from Waywack. So I'll put a link to it. It's very nice. Heavy duty. And it has a much bigger look here. This has this little bitty squirty thing. Whoa! Really nice, big one. You can hold it in your hand better and go boop, boop. And this has a wider, a wider squirty spout on it. And then when you're not using it, it has a really cool little notch up there at the top to hang this in. How awesome is that? So you don't get that on here. And so that's how it got all kinked up. And yes, I did tape it to the top, but the tape wore out and the thing fell down. All righty. So, I'm going to come back in a little bit, I'm going to have it with the chalk in it, I'm going to have my dress on, and I'm going to show you how it works, okay? Super fun, and then I can finish my two little dresses and start on the next one. And, before I shut down today, I'll show you my new scan and cut design. I did something and it actually turned out, I was so happy when I went to bed last night, I thought, <laughs> There is still hope for me. <laughs> All right, I'll be back in a mega second for y'all. Okay, this is kind of like a cane. This is so much nicer than that other one. It was quite a bit more. This was probably $45. I know it wasn't cheap, but you only have to buy it one time in your life. So what I have to do is figure out where I want this to squirt the chalk. So I have a pin in my dress where I want the hem to be. I just showed this to Jeffrey. He said he's dying laughing. I said, what are you laughing for? It's not funny. Okay, so that's 20, 20 inches off the floor is where I want my hem. And I'll guarantee you, if I just fold it up the same distance, this however far this is all the way around, it will not be level to the floor, I can promise you. So, I'm going to put this on the 20. If you can find a 20, oh, there it is right there. So you just squeeze this, pull it up, turn it. So 
It's aiming at you. So you have to stand up straight. You have to stand up straight. Now I haven't used this yet. Now see, I can't be bending over like this, which is what I'd be doing if I was trying to pin it and use a ruler. So I'm going to stand up straight and I'm going to squirt. Let me look at the mirror and see if it works. Squirt. Squirt. <gasps> look at that. Look at that. Do you see it? Yeah. Jeffrey's just mad because he doesn't wear dresses. Stand straight. Shoulders even. Yeah, I think we're going to make it. I can't see what I'm doing, but I hope it's working. It is. It's working. Oh, it's working, y'all. Oh my gosh, this is wonderful. Tell me if you have this and you already use it. Okay, there's all the marks. This is really a fun little tool. Now remember, this is the very first time I've ever, ever used this. I just got it today. So, I have squeezed all the way around. In the front I've got two lines because I had to go higher, remember. So I'll use the higher line. Yeah. And then I'll hem my dress. Oh my goodness. What a fun tool. Okay, let me go put my hem in and then we'll check it and see how good it turns out, okay? I'll be back. <laughs> I want to show you this. I read the directions, which I didn't the last few times I used it. It says base to wrong side of fabric with fuse side up for hemming. Then press in place with the press cloth. So that's what I did. I hemmed it to the edge, to this outside edge. This is sticky now on this side. This other side, this is not steam -a seam This isn't sticky in here. So you put it on here according to the directions with the sticky side up. Then you fold it in and then you iron it down. Okay? and then I will sew the hem up. Now I started out with a wide zigzag and the wide zigzag wanted to chew up the edges. See? So then I went to a straight stitch for a little bit somewhere. A straight stitch right there. And I decided well it didn't do much better. So then I just went to a narrow zigzag on the very 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 edge. And now I'm going to fold it up and iron it and then I'm going to sew the hem in and then I'm going to put this crazy dress nightgown whatever you want to call it back on well I yeah I'm making a top to go with my red yoga pants there on Lucy okay so here I've got the dress over the end of my ironing board now I wanted to remind you in my um, Amazon store Amazon.com slash shop slash Joy Bernhardt I have this iron and this ironing board in it because you ask me all the time. See? So I'm just ironing down on my crease. My purple dots are going away with the iron. It's wonderful. See the purple dots? There's that white interfacing. It's fabulous. Folding it up on the crease that I've already ironed in it. Just patting it down. Knit is alive. Remember, knit alive. You have to tame it. Just like a lion. You've got to show what who is the boss. See? See how nice and flat it is now? It's flat and neat. And it'll be easy to sew the hem in. Look at how crooked and ripply it is right now. Not good. You tried to sew that in with your sewing machine with it just waving around like that. Oh, you would have such a mess when you got done. down. Up, down, up, down. Don't go like this or you'll be spreading that fullness all over the place. And I did my usual cut down here on the one and a quarter inch line so the seam flops to the opposite side. You know how I like to do that. So this goes that way and this part goes toward me. Okay, there's the rest of it. Oh my goodness, it's looking so tame. <laughs> So, so flat. Okay, now that, that was iron on. That was the iron on side of that interfacing. And so now this is iron on. It's not going to come up. And so when I go around it with my sewing machine to stitch this hem in, 
it's just going to go around super, super easy, like as if it was a woven. Let's look at the bottom and see how it looks. Now, to hold this up to the world, it's probably as crooked as it can be at the bottom. <laughs> Insofar as being parallel to the floor. But on me, it's going to be perfect. I'm going to go sew this hem in and I'll be back. Well, let's see how good my new wonderful little chalk hem marker did. I really like this. This costs more, but it's worth it. It has a really nice handle. It holds the tubing so it won't kink. It has the bigger squeezy thing on it. Oh, nice. So, let's see how it did on even. Oh, let me see. That's the back. Look at that. Even Steven. Looks good. Looks good. The side is 22 and a half. This side is 22 and a half. The front is 22 and a half. The back is at, now if I stand up straight, 22 and a half. So it is parallel to the floor, whereas my body is not. And a lot of you aren't either, I promise you. Yeah, age has a way of doing that to us. <laughs> so, yes, where did I get this ruler? Lowe's or Home Depot one? It's metal. It's hard, it's metal, and it's really nice. You can read it real easy and see it really easy. So, next stop is the washing machine to get all the chalk off of it. Hopefully all of the, the vinyl won't come off of it. But hey, get you one of these. It is really nice. Now remember, this nice one, they don't have this on Amazon. You have to get this from Waywack. Waywack. I'll put a link below. Okay. If you want to see my new, 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 new scan and cut. Hey, did you see what I did here? Can you see that? That is removable vinyl. I can put some tape on top of that and pull it right off of there, and I could go stick it on the closet door or stick it on a chair or do whatever. Of course, I never will. But I just thought, oh my gosh, that's removable. I'm going to put it up here to remind myself to reverse my design. I should have reversed it. <laughs> this is going to be the video that never ends. <laughs> oh, it's such a nice day. It's cloudy outside, so I don't want to go outside and get sun. I did get my new um, recliner chair, though. Next time I go out there to get sun, I'll show you a picture of it. It is so nice. Did you know? They actually make recliners with cup holders. Yes, it's totally true. So I went downstairs to work on supper. It's four o'clock and I had taken some pork chop, butterflied pork chops out this morning, boneless butterflied pork chops. So they were all thought out. So I decided we're gonna do bada bing. Bada bing is some recipe I tore out of a magazine years ago. They are really good. It's got the oddest ingredients. The oddest. It's got zesty Italian dressing, Worcestershire sauce, applesauce, hot pepper sauce, and what's the other thing? Did I say applesauce? Lime. A whole lime squeezed. You mix it all up and you pour it on the pork chops and you marinate it for several hours. Then you cook them on the grill. Oh, mm. So I went down there to do pork chops and I noticed this package was on the counter. <laughs> I know. I know. And as usual, I have completely forgotten. So let's see if I can open it without cutting a hole in it for once in my life. I'm gonna try to push the material out of the way of the envelope. Okay, I think it's out of the way. Are you out? I'm wearing my green dress. I'll tell you the most comfortable dress. You're going to get, you got to stay home all the time anyway now. Lengthen a t-shirt. A cotton knit fabric. Just lengthen it. It is so comfortable. I'll sleep in this tonight, I'm sure. Okay, so I think there's only four pieces here, so I won't bore you for very long. This is a denim. This is a really cute denim. Yeah! Boy, I got enough of it. That's nice. 
It's not very soft, but it will be. Y'all know how you soften denim, right? You watch Peggy all the time like I do. This is two and a half yards of a nice denim. These would be really, really cute pants. I'm going to make those. You know the pants I had on the other day, the turquoise? I had the turquoise top with the embroidered flower on it and the turquoise pants. I'm going to make a pair of those with this and a top to go with. It is Carolina Blue Tomato Red Light Green Multi, 100% cotton, floral printed lie. Lie. L I G H. Lie. I guess they ran out of room on their machine. So, yes, I am going to wash this with a Coke. Peggy Sager says throw it in the wash with a Coke, a regular, normal, everyday Coke, dump the Coke on it, wash it, and it will come out soft. That's what I'm going to do because it's not very soft. Electric Blue Silk Cotton. Mid-weight woven, 54 wide. It really feels, look at this. W wonder what it means when there's an arrow. There's a little red arrow. Wonder what that means. It doesn't say they gave me any extra. It says to dry clean, but I'm not going to dry clean. This does not stretch. No stretch at all. But it's a silk and a cotton. Ah, yes. Very nice. Very nice. Okay, what's this one? Hot pink silk cotton. Midweight, woven, 55 wide, 2 and a half yards. Nice. Very nice. It's going to get washed in the washing machine. There's no dry cleaning in this house. We don't even have dry cleaners in our city. Alright, this one is different. Muted Indigo Blue Cotton Rayon Abstract Design Jacquard Suiting Suiting? Whoa, I bought suiting. New York Designer. Can you tell closer up to the camera? But it's got the raised abstract pattern in it. This is beautiful. I can see why they'd call it a suit. That's beautiful fabric. Happy with that. I haven't shown you my new scan and cut design yet. I have to go put it on. It's not done. I've got the neckline done and I've got the design on it. I may just hold off till tomorrow. I may go ahead and try to finish it. I've got another two hours before dinner. I think I'll go ahead and try to finish it the whole way and then I'll come back in the morning and I'll put that outfit on. Uh, it's just a plain old simple summer, no big deal outfit, but the scan and cut. Um, I came up with a design I put together all by myself and um, it turned out kind of cute. So for you it'll be no time at all, but for me I'll be back tomorrow and finish this video. I want to show you this because it's white. I use my new little chalk walker around her. I just love that thing. It's a thousand times better than the one I had before. I want to show you why it is an invaluable tool. Not a new invention. You might, you guys are going, we've had one of those for years. If you have, just turn me off. Turn me right off. You probably already did. <laughs> but I want to show you how invaluable it is. I know that I am a half inch shorter on my right side than I am on my left. I'm a half inch taller on this side. I'm a half inch shorter on this side because I have a slight C-shaped backbone because I've had scoliosis my whole life. It hasn't gotten worse, praise God for that. But if you don't have one of these little things to do your hem with and you just take this and fold it up two inches all the way around, you're gonna have an uneven hem. If you don't get your husband to come do it or your friend Philly to come do it or whatever. Yeah, I had my uh, shirt off. The first time Philly saw me with my shirt off um, and she was measuring, she said, I have never seen a back like that, Joy. <laughs> you would be shocked if you saw my back. So, this is the back of the garment I'm working on now. Now, the garment is even, okay? Remember, the garment's even. I cut it out with a paper pattern. So it's even. So if you're straight, 
and you're not crooked, you could just fold it up however much, an inch, two inches, all the way around, and it would be level to the floor on you. But look at this line here, and guess what? I was able to see the white chalk on this white shirt. Yay. So look at this. Now, you move quite a bit when you're doing this, so you have to kind of, I went around and around, and so, and of course I'm not still, so connect the dots, the dots that make sense. Now, this rides up on my underwear, of course, so I had to pull it down, I had to stand still, and so you can see the marks kind of jumped up and down. But I can see the ones that are right and the ones that are wrong. And I marked with this purple on top of the white chalk, so I'd be sure it would stay here. Okay, are you seeing <laughs> the crookedness of this? Now this, this is one side or the other. It looks to me like this is my tall side. Now this is the side seam, and it's the side seam over here on my tall side. I know that I'm a half inch difference from this side to this side. So let's see what the little rolly around each chalk wheel decided I was off. So right here is three inches three inches. That's not where I'm going to hem it. I'm going to hem it at two inches. What I'll do is I'll go around and I'll mark it two inches down from that line because I don't want my hem way up there. This is just to mark straight, okay? This is just to mark level to the floor. That's not where I'm going to hem it at. Okay, so this side measured at three inches. Let's see what this other side measured at. Now this is my right side, my short side. Let's see what it measured. It measured exactly three and a half inches. See there? See how accurate the little wheelie dealy with the chalk is? So we have to go from three and a half inches on one side to three inches on the other side. The only way in the world I can do that is with this chalk marker thing. And so in order to hem this, I know I want a two inch hem in the front. So I want my hem two inches. This is going to be over red leggings that I am currently wearing. So I want this to be hemmed two inches. So I am going to come down one inch all the way around from my chalk mark, which is now purple. I'm going to finish this top. I don't want to show you the cute, fun, scan and cut design on it till I get it all done. I cut a strip of this knit on the crosswise grain, an inch and a half wide. You can cut it two inches wide if you want to. You're going to cut off the extra. I measured the armhole opening. It was 18 inches on the seam line. So I cut this strip one inch less than that. I cut this strip 17 inches long. Then I took a quarter inch, you can see it right there, I took a quarter inch seam in that strip, okay? Then I marked the half points. I put the seam down here by the seam of the blouse. I put the shoulder up here by the shoulder of the blouse. And I stretched just a tiny bit. You know how you stretch to put the neck on? You want to do that around the sleeve of a knit as well. You don't want it really tight, but you want it a little, little bit shorter. You want your band a little bit shorter because, at least on me, sleeve armhole openings always want to gape. Gape, gap. Now I have it pinned on, and I'm going to sew around it. I've already done it on this armhole. This armhole... The strip is sewn on one half inch seam allowance. That's the strip. See the strip? One half inch seam allowance and that's the inside. One half inch. So now I'm going to take this after I get the other one sewn on, I'm going to trim the seam allowance down to one quarter inch. Then I'm going to fold the whole entire thing to the inside. The whole thing. And then I'm going to top stitch it, probably 3 8 inch. 
I'm going to top stitch at 3 8 inch, then I'm going to cut off all of this extra because there's going to be too much. But it's a lot easier to work with extra than if you were to cut it the exact because you're just using one layer. Yeah. So, that's how I'm doing my sleeveless armhole. You could do it with the facing. You could just serge it and fold it under. Except I don't think you can do over 3 8 inch that way. You'd have to make it a little bit narrower. Here's my armhole. This is the half inch seam that's now trimmed down to one quarter inch. One quarter inch. I'm taking the band and the seam allowance and folding the whole thing to the inside. The whole thing. So the outside, here it is again, there's a seam on the inside, the band on the outside, I'm folding the whole thing to the inside. Am I going to understitch it? No, because I'm going to top stitch it and sew it down and that should hold it. But see, that's what it's going to look like when it's done. It's going to have some stitching going around here. And then I'm just going to come back and trim the rest of this off. So I have sewn it down. I, for the very first time, did not use the Steam of Seam 2 to iron this on, on the back. You can see it's all loose except for my stitching. You can see the quarter inch seam allowance inside there. And here I've sewn it all the way around 3 8 inch. Now I'm going to cut off this extra back here with just a pair of scissors and I'm going to be very very careful <laughs> that I don't cut too far. See? I'm going to cut all this extra off down to my sewn line. I used a walking foot and it worked just wonderful. Walking foot's important for a knit because a walking foot has feed dogs on the top. So you have feed dogs on the top, feed dogs on the bottom, and it just makes it move evenly so you don't end up with a bunch of creases and tucks and pulls and, and um, all kinds of funky looking wrinkles. See? Let me show you how to do this real quick. To cut this extra knit, this is from the strip, the one and a half inch strip that I cut. This is how much is left over. So I want to show you how to cut it off so you don't cut into your garment. Take, I've got it inside out, so I'm on the inside where this is, or I can see it real good. Fold it over on the seam line so it's on top of your hand. See how it's on top of my hand? There's the finished seam. I'm folding it under, and then I'm flipping out, flipping out into the air, this part I'm going to cut off. So, the scissors are going to touch my fingers. When I put my scissors underneath here, they're going to touch my fingers. So, it can't cut anything else because the only thing underneath here is my fingers. See there? If you don't do that, you are going to cut right into your garment. I promise you, I'm very good authority on that. Here's what I cut off. This is what I cut off of that strip. That's why you can cut it two inches, however wide. Don't get it over two inches, that'd be too wide. But um, you're just going to cut off the extra anyway. And the extra helps you deal with it. It is super, super close. Now remember also my new sewing friends. This is a knit. A knit. You could not do this to woven unless you're using a knit for your band because knits don't ravel. If you're using wovens, you have to have finished edges. Okay, but for a knit, ah, that's one reason I love to make knits so much. That's the finished armhole on the inside. I just injured my thumb on my camera. <laughs> Rolling it down, I rolled it onto my thumb. Ouch. And I don't have um, a Band-Aid, so. <laughs> oh my. 
I'm going to try not to bleed, so pardon the paper towel. For those of you who don't know what a walking foot is, this is a walking foot. You hook it onto your machine like you would any, any of your feet, but it has a little bar that goes around this, um, this thing that where your needle goes in and out and you turn that, that little knob right there. There's a little bar like this, a fork bar, and you hook it over that bar right there. So then when you sew, can you see it moving? It walks. That's why it's called a walking foot. Go figure. Okay, now I have lined this up. I've moved the needle over one place. Most of your machines now you can move your needle to the left and right. I wanted this to sew at 3 8 inch. Now let me tell you about a walking foot. The thing about the walking foot is it isn't going to walk if it's not on your fabric. So I can't sew this like this because this foot's just out here in the air. It's going to be walking on air and it's going to feed crooked if I just have one foot on it. I wish they'd actually make some skinnier walking foots, but they don't. So, lift your needle up. Arrange your garment. I'm sewing on the front of the garment. I have that band folded to the back with the seam allowance inside. You already saw the other arm all done. I thought, well, I might as well show them the walking foot. Remember to take little bites when you put your pins in. Okay, so I am going to line this. I'm going to line up the edge of the foot right here on the edge of this armhole. This foot on the edge of this armhole. That's why you got to move your needle to the right or left. Or you'll have, you can have a really wide seam or a skinny seam or whatever. But I want mine to be 3 8 inch. And so I'm making mine 3 8 inch and I'm going to follow the um, 3 8 inch line on my ditch plate. Alright, let's go. And I've got it on a 3, stitch length of 3. Now, if I wasn't using this walking foot, as I was going around this armhole, it would crunch and wrinkle and fold and bend. Knit wants to be naughty. Knit wants to be naughty. That's why somebody invented all. See that? See how it walks the top? So you're walking on the top, and I'm looking at, I'm not looking at the needle. I'm not looking at this until I get to it, and I make sure it's folded under. I can't get my thumb on it, so I'm sorry I look real crazy right now. But I'm looking at this line over here and making sure that I'm lined up with that line. You don't ever have to look at your needle. Your needle's going to go up and down forever and ever and ever. You don't have to look at it. The only time you look at it is if you run out of thread. Now, I need my thumb, and I can't use it right now. Why don't you get a band-aid? Because I have to go downstairs to get one, and then I'll have to go see what Jerry's doing, and then I'll forget what I'm doing. <laughs> ah, yes. See? See how nice that foot works? They're expensive. You know, these sewing machine companies, they, they charge you a fortune for the things that go with your sewing machine. But you only have to buy it once. I've had this for, how long have I lived in this house? I've had it at least 15 years. There used to be a Bernina dealership in um, Frisco, Texas. It's not there anymore. And they used to have this lady that managed it, and I just loved her. She and I got along really, really good. And I used to go there a lot. So anyway, I bought this sewing machine there many many years ago and I always buy a walking foot to go with every machine that I buy except that my newest machines my Bernina 740s have built in walking foots even feed foots they're called Whew. you know it's a really good thing that you can learn from other people's mistakes <laughs> I think I should get some kind of an award or something for the person that makes the most mistakes <laughs> when trying to show people how to do something. I was making this top to go with my red leggings. I stood right here and made a little video showing you what they looked like. 
and it dawned on me I got the top way too short. It should be down here instead of up here. So I've got my jeans I made on. These are my Jaylee jeans. <laughs> this does not look good with leggings. <laughs> so it's all done. Number one, I messed up the hem. Remember in my video, if you all even watched it, um, I said I'm going to mark one inch below the purple line. Well, that was the line I wanted to fold the hem up on. I should have added another inch past that line. I cut on the fold line. That's why my blouse is too short. It's not too short for jeans, though, so that's no problem. So anyway, did I tell you I don't like the fabric? This is the fabric I got from Fabric Wholesale Direct. Bill was right. Not high quality. She said she was real disappointed in what she got from them. And I thought this was going to be nicer than it is. But it's that kind of cotton. See the bubbles in it? If you ever poke it, if it rubs over a button or a bow or a see, see how it holds? Oh, I'm always going like this everywhere on it. Not good, not good. It looks like I'm wearing one of Jerry's undershirts, and I do not like that. I do, however, like my scan and cut design. Of course, I can just cut it out again and put it on a shirt made out of a nicer cotton. Hopefully, I have one here somewhere. I'm also not happy with the neckline I put in it, so I definitely want to make it again. And all I have to do is cut the design out. I saved it, and I've got enough red. I can do it again, or I can make it out of a different color. But we'll just call this the practice shirt. I practiced my scan and cut. I found out the fabric is El Junco, and I've got four more yards of it. Mm. I might try pressing some of that, um, that knit interfacing on the back of the next one that I make, and maybe it'll do away with this lumpy, bumpy stuff here. It's fine for doing my Shelly exercises. Do y'all exercise over 50s with Fabulous 50s, Shelly? Her exercises are amazing, and every single one she does different things. I don't know how she thinks up all those different moves. But I exercise with Shelly, so I figured this is good enough for exercising with Shelly, even with the leggings that don't look decent for the public, but they're good enough for in front of the TV. <laughs> they stretch better than jeans do. So, I like my design. I made it myself, sort of. I did not download this design. I downloaded, um, it's not a kit, it's not a package, a set. I downloaded a set of squiggles, of all things, squiggles. I downloaded a set of squiggles. One was just like an S. Some of them are like commas. Some of them are like apostrophes. Most of them are very simple. But this one actually is this. This right here is the squiggle. Okay? So I put it into my Canvas workspace, and I just duplicated it, and duplicated it, and duplicated it, and duplicated it, and then I just turned them, and turned them, and switched them, and turned them all around. And I knew that I wanted a long diagonal um, design, you know, like you just want to Miss America, and they hang that ribbon around you. <laughs> oh, I could win Miss Bag Lady in this shirt. Okay. I do want to make the top again. I, I'll, I'll change it. I'll fix the neck. <laughs> and I'll make it longer and I'll do it right next time. But I still want to use the design because I'm real proud of myself for inventing it, sort of. Okay, my friends. I'm sure I've lost 99% of you. Whoever's left, thank you for bearing with me. I hope you learned something. You know you'll always learn what not to do if you watch my videos. I'll be back soon because there's something special I want to tell you about. Okay? It has to do with pants and crotches. Alright. Bye for now.